House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. Welcome back into the House of Mystery. And of course, it's 2023. We are back on the road. Yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely awake. I'm glad you're back. Guy. I'm glad you're running things here. Get, yeah, get going because I'm I'm yeah. I can't I can't handle it. <laughs> I, I'm over it. Um, yeah. So here we go. Um, now, um, yesterday I was a good show. Hey, it worked out really yeah. well. You know, Marilyn yeah, always. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff. Always. <laughs> never changes <laughs> never changes i always wonder about that you know i just I, but it keeps on going yeah keeps on going so now we're getting back into the this is the true stuff today okay we're getting into real things here uh so now we've got a uh performer who's really good but he's doing he's writing and we're going to talk about his book uh, the book is called time lab episode one san francisco that's your old stopping grounds isn't it and we've got jacquim joiner thank you for being here Hey, Alan, thanks for the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. It's always good to have you. So, so what's been going on? You, how do you, how do you write, um, when you've got all this? I mean, cause I've been on the road. I know what it's like when you're traveling and you're doing, you're performing and you're also fairly popular and you've got albums, you've got all this stuff going on. So what, wh- where do you find the time to actually sit down and write? You know, I was asking myself that question this morning. <laughs> and did you uh, answer? Did you get an answer? <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah, you know, it's so crazy because um I'm so busy as a performing artist. Uh, you know, I play saxophone and I tour as a saxophone artist and a lot of my fans are also readers too, so they love it when I come up with something unique in a story. Uh, my first uh, novel, Zaria, came out yeah, back in 2014. Um, but it's, I will say that it's not the easiest thing to really get into writing like I'd like to because I'm also writing an album too. So, But I love stories, you know. So um, when I'm home, like in January, <laughs> I'm always home in January, I get to sit down and try to finish what I'm working on, any stories, any ideas. Uh, for instance, Time Lab, I'm just finishing up uh, episode two, and I'd like to get that done before I get on the road. So it's it's like a hit and miss kind of thing. It's like, you know, you get the time in when you can. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine. I, I mean, I'm doing a lot, but I find that, um, you see, I work on a uh, total – I, I'm, I'm a total nutball. Like I'll have music going, I'll have the TV going, sometimes two TVs going. I, I've got the radio show, and then meanwhile I'm I'm writing when all that stuff is going on, and I've got dogs oh, wow. running around. I got you know, so I'm kind of insane, but <laughs> that that sort of drives me to write. Like I couldn't sit in a in in front of a, a beautiful lake in a quiet breeze and sit there and start writing. That would be <laughs> that, that would I kill myself. I, I wow. I, I think. If I wasn't partially insane, I wouldn't be able to write either. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what, you know, because it, I find that, um, cause what I do is I put a lot of, a lot of things around me and that would really be distracting, but then I turn it off and it's almost like I'm in the eye of the storm and I can sort of sit there and write. So, whereas other people are, you know, they can't do that. They think, you know, you're insane, right? There's something wrong with you, and and um, so so where do, how do you how do you focus on what you're writing? But you know, I come up with a uh, I, a lot of times I try mainly focus on getting my outline done. Um, I kind of talk to myself and say, what do I want this story to be about? How do I want the story to sound? What do I want the audience to feel? Um, and then I just kind of put an outline and. Uh, you know, maybe it'd be 10 chapters in the beginning and just say, I want this to happen here. I want this to happen. I want to make sure this happens. And then I delve into the intros and just start writing. I find that I'm more focused in the morning time. Um, it's quiet. Um, unlike you, a lake would do me excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that, you know, I can't, you know, cause it's easy to, it's so easy to get pulled off of 
your zone. I mean, some, sometimes when you, you get into writing, it's like, oh, man, it's like I was I was gone yesterday, and today it's like nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, but I will say, though, you know, once you get into it, it's like all of this stuff is coming at you, and you're just, just scribbling it down as fast as you can. Um, so that you can look all, look at all that junk the next day and be like, what in the world is this? <laughs> this makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, but, I, I, but you know, the stress drives me, I think. So that, that drives me to write. And also I'm writing a lot of true crime and stuff. So I'm, I'm writing about really sick people. So I, I, the stress sort of feeds it. Um, I think, whereas, um, you're you're not you know so and i'm not writing some love story so you know it's it's not going to be uh you know something i need a leak lake for yeah you know i mean as a writer for me you know i i try to i try to come up with uh story plots and 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 storylines that haven't that aren't cliche i like to have my own kind of thing um when I'm putting down a story, you know, like uh, Time Lab, which is, okay, you know, there's tons and tons of stories about, you know, going to back to the future or going back in time and stuff like that. So in Time Lab, I say, well, what if we had, um, what if someone from the past, say 2,000 years ago, was working on a building a time machine, but they thought he was a witch, <laughs> right? Um, but he was doing, you know, true science. And then let's say we go to the current time, and there's a science in the current time, and he's dabbling in the same thing and seeing if it's possible to build a machine that could bend time or whatever. Somehow these two work together and build an ultimate time machine. That's basically what Time Lab is about. But everyone from their respective time think they're both crazy. So, <laughs> 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 you know, it's like in the past, Sir Bernard is like he's a witch, so... You know, they're looking for him, they're hunting him down, they want to arrest him and, 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 and throw away all, all of his equipment. And then Kyle, who's in current times, they just think he's a cocky student in college who thinks he knows everything. You know, he drinks, he's, he loves to party, and he's, he's, he's rarely sober. <laughs> but he's, in, he's, he's brilliant, you know, and, he, and, his, and his mother was working on a lot of science physics, and he's trying to follow that path. And uh, he comes up with some interesting things where people think he's still kind of crazy. So <laughs> that's, that's time lab. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, you know, uh, you know, having written music and having, you know, written novels now, is there anything similar in your creative process to doing both of those? Or, you know, does, you know, musicianship help you uh, with like the rhythm of language as you're writing? You know, I think um, because, you know, not every performing artist is a producer or writer of their own music. Luckily, I write my own songs, so um, which is a completely different mindset that's required, you know, to being just simply a performer. Um, so when you get into writing songs like, like I do, and it feels like um, you, you're in this big creative process, and as you come back and comb over it again and again, it just starts to get better and it makes more sense. I feel like it's the same way with writing stories because I just kind of, it's, it almost feels like I'm writing songs, believe it or not. Hmm. Um, and it's like, wow, it's like everything is kind of coming together as long as I'm patient with the story and allow the story to kind of compose itself and just kind of follow along and put the pieces together is exactly what I do when I'm writing songs. So it just works perfectly uh, for me as, as an author and a writing, I, something that was really unexpected. I didn't think that, you know, when I first started trying to write my first story, which is Zaria, I didn't know what, was, <laughs> you know, what the process was going to be like, but it turns out that it fit exactly who I am. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. How, who do, how do you put yourself in your characters or do you, or is it like a dream to you or do you like, you know, and you're um, hungover or something and it comes to you or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I grew up around 
so many different types of people and personalities and traveling the world. You, you meet so many people and so many interesting people and interesting characters, <laughs> you know. So I'll try to take some of that experience and, 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 and pour it into uh, someone in the story, perhaps. Uh, for instance, Kyle, who is, um, um, you, you know, he's, he's, he's from, the, from the present time. He kind of reminds me of a bass player that I used to work with who just would never find himself sober ever. So, and just was fun to hang around because of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, you know, drew on some of those energies. I'm not going to say his name, but if he read the story, he would say, that's me. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's a good thing, maybe. <laughs> well, maybe, right? You know. Yeah, it depends. You know. Well, that's interesting. Um, so when you um, well, it's, it's, so what is, what do you got going on here? Like this is episode one. So are you are you writing this like a um, like a um, I don't know what you call it, almost like a serial, like a show that you would see on TV, um, you know, like a series. Yeah, I mean, it's mainly like a series. I mean, I'm I'm already into episode three now writing. I haven't put out episode two yet. Um, so it's like the story is really coming along nicely. Um, and some really interesting things, some new characters are coming in to be a part of the story. And maybe a few people who actually uh, agree with the two scientists and that they're not actually crazy and insane. So um, it's, it's starting to feel really good. Um, and I think that honestly, um, I'll probably get to somewhere 15, 16 episodes on this thing, I believe. Well, yeah, you never know. You just go, yeah, with it I mean, and, you know. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, be conclusive on anything as I'm, as I'm writing and, and putting this story together. I, a new thing that I'm trying to do, because this is really kind of like my first series and I'm, I'm working on another series. This has something to do with something else. Um, but um, I'm kind of figuring out uh, to try to outline this series, actually. So, like, go all the way to, you know, episode 16 and kind of work backwards a little bit um, and then just kind of fill in the pieces. So it's just kind of a new way, kind of a different way of looking at the story in a whole, I guess. Yeah, I think it's a good way in a sense because you 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 kind of have the outline and you fill in the the holes because you won't make the mistakes of you know if you if you're doing it one at a time and you get to somewhere and you want you, it's hard sometimes to change things. Exactly, especially if it's you know some cool stuff that happened and it's like gosh you know I can't change that. It's like uh, what do I do and then now you're stuck you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I I understand that. Um, so when you when you're when you're doing this and you put this out, um, what do you hope someone gets out of the book? Like when someone picks up Time Lab and they read it, what is it you want? What kind of reaction? Or what kind of thing do you want? Well, okay, so two things. Uh, one, I, I would like for people in the science community to enjoy it, to um, to find find it interesting, uh, find it fun. Um, but then also, um, exciting for, you know, people who like to have a sense of adventure. Like, for instance, um, I'll just give you a, a little short part of the story. Uh, Sir Bernard's time machine does actually work and he manages to escape to the future before they arrest him. <laughs> and, uh, the, <laughs> the first thing he, he sees is lights. And he's jumping around. He doesn't know all of these sounds, cars beeping and, um, you know, and then, a, and then a plane flies over and it's just like he just jumps to the ground <laughs> from the sound of <laughs> the engine. And he just, you know, and it's trying to fix his eyes on where he is, um, you know, so that type of excitement that, you know, hopefully could keep a reader at the edge of their seat and just really give them that sense of adventure plus science, you know. I would like for them to feel that. <laughs> well, how important is it for you to work with um, and research uh, uh, current science and uh, even current thought on uh, time travel? Is that something that you do, or is it mostly um, imagination? No, I do do some research, and um, one a uh, good friend of mine works here at the Air Force Base for. Uh, 
uh, Northbrook Rumming, and I talked to him about some stuff. And then I got another uh, friend of mine who is our uh, robotics technician um, in um, Boston, and they're developing all kinds of stuff. And I always, like, kind of throw stuff back at them and, like, so would this make sense or, you know, what is this and how do you do this? So I would like for it to have um, – I want this series to have some real science. So um, – so like, like I said earlier, because I want people in the science community to also find it interesting, not just, you know, a bunch of imaginary stuff that this happened this way, this happened this way. Well, you know, theoretically, if there was to be time travel, these are the things that the- theoretically would need to work. <laughs> mm-hmm. So how can we incorporate that into uh, a fun storyline, if that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good, you know. Good luck trying to get the science community happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. They're like, they're, 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 as soon as they see it, they're like, nope, wouldn't work. Yeah. No, <laughs> yes, no forget it. No. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are tough. The hard science five people are really, uh, really tough. But, mm. you know, mm-hmm. somebody's got to do it, I guess. You know. Yeah, someone. Yeah. Why not me? Yeah, you know, why not? <laughs> what, what, what do you got to lose at this point, right? You know? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, so what what influences you? It's, it's that you've been into science fiction since you were a kid. So what kind of things do it? Is it like kind of the old classics um, from the 50s and 60s or earlier, or do you like modern stuff? Well, I mean, you know, I think my first science fiction, um, I think it was, no, it was Star Trek. Yeah, I remember I was about five or six, and it was always my dad was always watching Star Trek. And then the new Star Trek came out, Star Trek Next Generations. <laughs> I'll never <Yeah>. forget that. Because <laughs> um, the first one was, um, uh, I can't remember. Spock and Shatner? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was like, I was really, really just barely born when that one came out. But then Star Trek Next Generation with Captain Picard was very interesting. And the Cleons and all of that stuff was very exciting. And then Star Wars, and that, I, I, I just fell in love with the Star Wars story and, and what it means to be a Jedi and what it takes, and then the Sith Lord and all of this stuff. <laughs> you know? And then, um, as of recent, a lot of the new science fiction stories and movies were disappointing. While the CGI was amazing, the visuals was awesome, but I'm like, this plot just doesn't really do it <laughs> yeah. uh, for me at least you know so I'm like gosh it's like you guys waste all of that CI on a story that could have been so much better and I think that led me into trying to you know uh, do my own story which is what, what uh, <laughs> why I started to write Saria and I said wow okay this is a lot harder than yeah. <laughs> I thought <laughs> it's always that way right you know? it's like man I gotta remember all the characters I gotta find a way how to get organized and I was like Jeez, this is insane, but I just kept going. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of how it is, you know. You just got to – it's it's always harder sitting from the sidelines saying, why don't they do this? Why don't... But, it, but it's true. A lot of um, things are very computer-generated now, so it's very – it's very effects and a lot less plot. And mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of stuff you can have on without listening to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? And it's so interesting because, like, um, while Zarya was um, uh, my first storyline, I, I did another book called uh, Minor Assassin, and I think um, my second novel is where I really started to find my tone as an author, where I started to see um, how my writing seems to be a certain way that I think people will instantly recognize um, cause I think the first story was a lot of trying and I was going back and forth with editors and different things like that. So, um, but I think of my minor assassin definitely goes into, um, my authentic tone, I think, um, where I really love, I like suspicion. I like thriller adventure and I like science, <laughs> you know, and I like putting that in, in stories. So minor assassin is, is a different kind of a story. Whereas Zarya is more of a teenage science fiction teenage girl saves the world type of thing. Minor assassin is more of a real world, you know, real cops, real detectives, uh, real bad things happening and real mystery. And, uh, you know, so it's a different genre, so to speak. (laughs) Well, you know, you talked about organization and, um, 
and, and refining your organization. Do you have any tools to do that? Do you have a process for organizing both um, what you're going to put into the story and um, maybe the attributes of your characters? Well, right now, Scrivener, Scrivener is like pretty much does everything that I wanted to do. I don't know if you've heard of that software. Oh, yes, um, I use it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so that really keeps me organized because I can put pictures in or inspiration mm. for pictures and I can throw my plot lines out. Or for, so If I get a really quick idea to put in Chapter 3, I can just go and put it on the notes there and decide. So when I go and look at Chapter 3, I can see my notes there. And, I, I mean, honestly, I, can, I, I can't find anything else better than that. That's really keeping it <laughs> going for me. Um Really, I'm, uh, any other tools, like I would say, um, gosh, outside of Scrivener, I mean, Scrivener covers so much. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, I found um, it uh, very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got the app on my phone, too, uh, the Scrivener app uh, yeah. on your phone, too, and that kind of syncs as well. But I don't like to do it sync too much because it's like I don't want to I don't want to lose anything. <laughs> yes, that's, that's frightening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think at one time, I think I did lose, I was, I was just gone. It was like, I don't know, 10 p.m. at night and I was on my phone and I was, I just started going. The, the story was just coming to me and I was just on a roll. And then I think I went to sync and then I came back and I looked at my phone and it was empty. Oh. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just like, I'm not gonna, it, it's gone. It's gone forever. <laughs> so you gotta be careful with the syncing stuff. So I'm really, really, careful with syncing this. I might just keep it where I use Scrivener the locally here just to keep the ideas and stuff like that real quick. But I don't want to sync and get all get it confused. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. End up on someone else's phone. <laughs> exactly. Right? Hey, I've had the same thing happen with songs. You know, I'm working I'm working on a song and I'm coming up with a melody and different things like that and then all of a sudden the computer shuts down. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, and it's like you know, I've been working for three hours, and then maybe I, I didn't save. <laughs> yeah. No, I know that hurts, yeah. man. That hurts. Yes. I mean, it's just gosh, it's gonna take a, a, a two weeks to get back motivated. <laughs> yeah, it's the universe's way of saying no. This isn't working. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's crazy though. Like if you kind of remember the idea of what you're doing, surprisingly enough, that second time when you write it, it actually is better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, you're in a different frame of mind, maybe, and that's yeah. certainly more careful or something. I don't know. Who knows? Wow. Exactly. So, so you don't know where it's going to go. You're just going to do do this time lab until. Yeah, you know, I haven't. Well, here's what I I, I, I kind of know where it's going to. I kind of know how the story's going to end. I mean, uh, uh, Sir Bernard has to get back to answer to. Um, he can't stay in San Francisco. I mean, he has a family in. Um, where is he? He's in some somewhere in um, gosh, I can't remember where I had to put him in. But he's you know in Europe, <laughs> and he has a family there. He's got to get back to back two thousand years ago. <laughs> so What's that's going to be. He might really get into San Francisco. He might transition, yeah. become a woman, be going to the gay bars now. Uh, <laughs> why? Why does he want to go back to the wife and kids? He's, what? And they want to kill him. They think he's a witch. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, maybe you know, I've got a. Um, one part in the series where it's going to be getting some communication coming through from um, some trusted people. And so he, he has to solve some issues there. Plus I, I think he's also uh, anxious to make sure that his family is safe too. So um, he has to get back and Kyle has to prove to his professors. He's not crazy. So um, they both have <laughs> important things to do. <laughs> mm. I wonder if the time travel will ever really happen. Well, you know, it's technically you can see into the into the uh, past. You know, when you look in space. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, true. yeah. So that's pretty much you know time travel, I guess. I mean, the idea is if you can be there um, instantaneously, and it, the, the 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 biggest thing that scientists have come up with is by bending time, bending light, and um, creating a warp in um, the. Um, space, creating a warp in space-time and bending it. Um, so supposedly that's supposed to be a way to travel. Um, no one has figured it out. I doubt if they do. <laughs> well, let's th get them on that. They can Then they can go back in time and fix things. Yeah, but then the thing is, it's like, 
if you go back in time and because I don't know what this theory is called, but if you go back in time and fix something that's broken, then it was never broken, which means that you never had to go back in time to fix it. <laughs> well, but I'm. <laughs> well, they can make me young again, so there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, but then you would go back in time and be young again to come back to be old again. <laughs> well, just keep it going in a circle, and it's okay, you know. Yeah, I mean, it would be like your own time loop while everyone else is moving. Yeah, in in one singular line in time, you're in a loop. <laughs> there you go. You see. Now I know. That's what I want. They're stuck in a loop. Yeah. We'll work on that. Get that going. Forget That's music. What are you doing? Stop put down that. You start <laughs> stop doing that music and start getting this working, you know? Right. At the time loop. <laughs> so what wow. are you what are you gonna do? Uh when you got two careers like this going, how do you choose? How do you choose? I do not like choosing. <laughs> I don't want to have to choose, honestly. Um I mean, I love both of them. I, uh, my music career takes priority, obviously. <clears throat> right. And um, so, um, I, I don't. I mean, gosh, would I ever have be in a situation where I have to choose? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess if Warner Brothers picked up one of my stories and said, "We want to give you a trillion dollars, just focus on this." Yeah, pretty much, I make the choice <laughs> and not go on tour. Right. I mean, so um, there's always going to be time to write. I think you know. You don't have to spend hours to write. You can write for 10 minutes, you know, if, if it's something that you like doing. Um, I will say, you know, when it comes to marketing and publishing and all that other stuff, you know, that's kind of a headache. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you, you, see, and you wish you didn't have to do all of that, but I guess it's just kind of the landscape now, really. Oh, it's awful. After you like, you know, all yeah. that marketing online and social media, yeah. and then you have to talk to people like us, and it's just <laughs> <laughs> crazy people like yeah. Alan yeah. Warren. Get crazy! Yeah. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> I don't know, but well, I know it was hard to focus. It. I think it it takes you off your game, sort of, doesn't it? In a way, I do I? You know, it's like. Because not, you know, it's like, am I supposed to be a, be a wizard on social media and also be writing? I mean, there was a time where even music is the same thing with music, actually. Yeah. You know, I mean, we have to post our shows and sometimes we get promoters. They'd be like, hey, we need, we need, to, we need to sell more tickets for this show. So can you do this video and can you do that and you can do that? And, you know, and they actually do these things. And we, we want to do that because, you know, we want to have sold out shows. Yeah. But we, prefer to just make good music and create a great performance if that was allowed yeah <laughs> well yeah well you know years ago that's kind of how they did it you know the different movie studios or um you know the record labels they did all of that they mm -hmm. took elvis and sent him everywhere <laughs> yeah that, and that's the thing it's like and you wonder does that does your art suffer when you're doing all of these things newsletters and but i will say i mean w without the work that i put in on the business side of it, you know, I, I don't think I would have been further as long as I am. So it's kind of like I had to really, you know. Yeah, I think that's the way it is now. It's not, they, they haven't got those big uh, studios and record labels like they used to that were doing everything. So now you kind of, you if you don't do it, nobody else will type thing. Yeah, I mean, and I was with the big label for some 15 years, and even then I still had to do a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what, kind of what I mean. Like, nowadays, yeah. they don't, it's not like they do the same thing. Even, you know, mm -hmm. even, the, even the publishers, the big publishers, it's like, there isn't the same sort of work that goes behind it from the, you know, support. Um, mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's, I think you kind of have to, which uh, I guess in a way it probably hurts hurts the art a little bit. But at the same time, it gives you more control, right? It does give you more control, yeah, more creative control, you know, and your audience, too. You can communicate directly with your audience and your fans, which is great, you know. Um, but their expectations get higher <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, more, the more attention you give them. <laughs> plus, plus it's, there's more expectations. You know, you've got so many people coming at you now on social media or live than as compared to just – when you're when you're kind of hid behind the wall and someone else is doing it and they kind of tell you now you've got a lot of voices so exactly so yeah, yeah but it's i don't know it's like you know it's just where we are and I, we we, we got to do it yeah i can't complain anymore i guess it's, that's just the way it is 
<laughs> That's right. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so who does it? Who do you want to work with ever? Uh, as a uh, either, either. I mean, in your case, either because music's got some really interesting characters out there, and um, so does writing in a sense, right now. Yeah, I like I like Mary Lou's stories. You know, James Patterson. You know, um, I'm reading um, The Martian. I've seen the movie, but I actually decided to uh, go in and read the uh, book. I'm on Martha Wells too. She's amazing. Um, but The Martian by Andy uh, Weir and the, because I've seen the story, but the book is like, wow, it's so much more. Great and book. it's so much more scientific, too. And I'm like, man, they didn't put any of this stuff in the movie. <laughs> well, yeah. I, 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 I agree, <laughs> but I wonder how much they could without losing, yeah. you know, people get bored. Yeah, right. Right, you know. Yeah, two hours. After two hours, it's like, you know, an hour and a half, really. So, yeah. yeah. The real story, the true story is in the book. Yeah. It always is. There's, there's so much. There's so much. As a, as, a, as a saxophone player, though, as a performing artist, you know, as a, I would love to work with, uh, you know, Alicia Keys. Um, uh, it would be nice to work with, um, <clears throat> gosh, there's so many artists I want to. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Gosh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a list. I mean, I've worked with some, some pretty amazing artists, but there are some that I haven't yet that I would, I would love to. So it's a big list I got written down. I got a bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> well, get on it. You know, what do you I got to. You know, just, just start phoning these people. That's it. Just call them in. Yeah, call them up. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, the worst they do is say no. Exactly. You know. I mean, the worst they, well, they can curse you out. And then say no. <laughs> well, yeah, I've, I've had that a few times. But, curse you know, you this, but in a way, that's kind of an honor in itself. That's an honor, yeah, getting cursed out by Alicia Keys. Yeah, wow. could you imagine if she called you <laughs> some great. some harsh names? And, uh, oh, my gosh. Where else could you get that? I would be touched. I yeah. would I'm so touched <laughs> by what you said. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least there's a passion for you. There you go. See, see. You know, uh, you kind of kind of laugh at that, but um, well, that's that's cool. That, that's it's really interesting. Well, so um, now the book is out. Now, do you? How do you deal with people on social media? Do you have like a website? Do you have social media platforms? How do people find yeah. you? Well, I mean, all of my social media is at Jackie Joiner. Most people just can't spell my name, so yeah. Um, J A C K I E M J O Y N E R Instagram at Jackie Joyner. My website is Jackie Um And if you want to just go into my stories and just look at my books, you can go to I have a different website called JoynerBookClub.com, and that has my books and stories and different stuff I may be working on and stuff like that. And, you know, people can kind of go in there and just uh, you know chat, leave, leave comments, and, you know. So that's a cool place for readers and authors. Yeah. Well, we'll put all that up too, right? You know, we'll get all that up so people can find you with one click and they don't have to know how to spell. You know, it's a tough thing these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, including with grammar and spell check and all of that. It doesn't matter. People still can't spell. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. Um, so that's really interesting. How is the, um, are you glad now kind of the pandemic's passed and you can kind of get out again or how was that for you? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, it was, last year was an amazing year for touring, and this year is shaping up to be another really, really busy year, um, and, and it's, it's interesting because I'm trying to fit in the writing um, <laughs> schedule <laughs> and release schedule, too, and let me tell you, it's, it's, just, it's not easy uh, touring and stuff like that, and also I'm putting out an album this year, so... Um, it's definitely going to keep me busy. I'm glad that the pandemic has kind of seemed like it's tapering now to the point to where people aren't afraid to come out to shows and say hi and shake your hand and, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, be, be normal again. Yeah. All the groupies. <laughs> yeah, all the groupies. <laughs> what are you going to do without groupies? You know, we got, <laughs> got to have a few groupies. Yeah, but do you, do you wear masks with groupies or not? You know, I can't. When's the last time I wore a mask? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. I know. Yeah. Actually, no, I've worn it a few times because when you still go into a doctor's offices or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. you still have to wear. It. Yeah, they still make you wear it and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, something you have to get used to. Actually, I look better with a mask. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah, you know, look, when half of your face is covered, you look better because they don't have to see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I got nice eyes. <laughs> see, so I can just show my eyes off and then they go, oh, well, he's, he's not bad looking. See, it works. I'm going to leave it on, actually, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so it could be a thing. It could be a thing. It could be your thing. I'll start a new trend. I'll be like, I'll be the new Lady Gaga. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Well, uh, we really appreciate you coming on and talking about your book, Time Lab, and, and kind of letting us know what's going on with you. I'm glad everything's going good and you're out performing again and doing stuff. And, um, geez, what can I say? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So now the book, of course, everyone, it'll be on the website. You can just uh, pick it up. You should. Why not? It's fun. Yeah. Help them out. Yeah, it's two ninety nine. It's It's oh. super cheap. Jeez. You know, what can you get for two ninety nine <laughs> nowadays? Yeah. You know? That's not even a, a... That's not even a coffee. No. I mean, no, a latte. That's not even a latte. That's not even a mocha latte caramel. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and it's less calories. It's better for you. It's less calories. <laughs> it's good for your mind. Yeah. And it's a short read, too. It's a short read, you know. Well, that's good, you know. Well, perfect. Now, the book, <laughs> Time Lab. It's episode one. Yes. And uh, Jackie Joyner, thank you for being here. Thank you. This has been a pleasure, you guys. Thanks, Jackie. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.